welcome to this video. This video is part two to Sophie's story. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll post it right here on um, here somewhere so that you guys can go back and watch it. You wanna watch that first before you watch um, this because it is part two. This is the story of Sophia um, and how we almost lost her when she was young. Sophia was my fifth child, my second daughter. She was born when I was 40 years old, just a couple of weeks before I turned 40. Had a super healthy pregnancy. She was born at 41 weeks. I had, um, she was induced and I had a completely med-free uh, labor. I had uh, uncomplicated pregnancy and when we took her home we felt so happy and so complete because we had struggled to conceive for the fifth time at that age and it took 11 months for us to actually get pregnant with Sophia so when we took her home from the hospital it was an incredible amazing feeling for us to know that we had beat the odds and that we had had our baby our miracle baby it was apparent really soon after we came home that Sophia had colic. Our fourth child, also a little girl, was the easiest baby, and I swear that God was laughing at me when he sent us Sophia because I had made a comment to Sam saying, well, we're perfect parents now, we must know what we're doing because Gabby was just so good. I thought that it was because we knew what we were doing, but no, you never know what you're doing. Kids are all different. So we came over from the hospital and she had colic. It seemed like every single time I fed her, she had the worst belly aches. She hardly could sleep and I spent many a night rocking her on my belly trying to sleep. I is the only pregnancy, the only time I've ever had a little bit of depression after. I remember driving in the car, rocking back and forth like this. Everywhere I drove, I was rocking because I would just I had just spent so many hours and every day rocking back and forth to try and soothe her tiny little belly and make her feel better. But luckily for us, just like usual, after about three months, she started to outgrow the colic and she started to turn into a happier baby. Still, she was never as happy as my other kids she still she cried none of my other kids hardly ever cried but Sophia did cry she was fussy a lot and um, she also as a right from birth she had a stuffy nose her nose was stuffed up all the time she just had this nasally sound to her all the time and and I would mention it to the doctor and he would say oh you know her her nose is just really dry you need to get this stuff and squirt it up there and we did that and nothing really seemed to help and as she got older, she did get more and more stuffy. Anyway, we just went along and everything was going well until she was about 14 months old. It was Christmas time and we had a lot of people around and of course, what can happen then is that people get sick. Our family always gets sick at Christmas and Sophia finally, you know, she got her first really bad cold when she was about 14 years old. And we tried to stay home with her and tried to just treat it like a normal cold because we had so many family there and we didn't want to miss everything. So at one point Sam said, we need to take her to the hospital. And I said, I think she'll be okay. And Sam had suffered from asthma his whole entire life. He still has asthma. And he said, no, we need to go now. And so we took her to Emerge and I said to my family, you know, we'll be back in just a couple of hours, it'll be okay. At this point, so I agreed with him. Sophia was panting a lot. She was grunting a lot while she was breathing. And so we went there and they took us right in and they said, you know, they did an x-ray and they said that she had bilateral pneumonia, which was pneumonia in both of her lungs, both sides of her lungs. And, and they said, you know, this is the pediatrician said, this is the worst case of pneumonia I have ever seen in a baby ever. And one thing you should know about Sophia is that she is the most loving person I have ever met. And even as a baby, it, it didn't matter if you were a stranger, if you had your hands on her or you were touching her, she was so happy. So she loved being at the hospital. She was pretty lethargic, but the more people who touched her, the happier she seemed to be. So they admitted Sophia and they gave her some antibiotics, even though um, they don't usually treat it, pneumonia with antibiotics where we live. Um, they gave her some heavy duty antibiotics, they gave her some steroids, and they put her on oxygen and she spent a few days in the hospital. If I remember, I'll try and post pictures right here. And 
and so a couple of days later she was really sick I mean I've had she's my fifth baby and I've had some sickness and I've even had kids go in the hospital but she was really sick and it was scary and um, two days after she was admitted though they said as long as she can maintain her oxygen levels while she's sleeping then she can go home and they sent us home Sam and I were a full of nerves when we took her home because she was still really sick and she was sick for weeks and weeks after that but we trudged along and you know things seemed like they were a little better and so after we were at the hospital and she was admitted with pneumonia we had to follow up with our pediatrician and our pediatrician you know took her history and said I don't want this to happen again to her she needs to oh I feel sick even just talking about it honestly so many things happened that I still can't even talk about some of them without tearing up because it was it was a really hard time so she said to us we she needs to be on some inhalers so she continued to get sick that whole entire winter I mean as she would get sick and if she got a cold it would go straight to her lungs and she she could hardly breathe all the time she just she just was she could hardly breathe so every time we went back to the doctor for a follow-up they would say you know you need to give her the inhalers this often you need to so we were giving her inhalers four times a day and and she needed to take them even when it was not even when she was not sick I had a really hard time with that because a couple of my boys had asthma just mild asthma and I only gave them the inhalers when they had a problem not all the time but her pediatrician wanted her to take the inhalers from October all the way to March or April just for the whole entire winter season so we did that so the year after that um, Sophia was sick again and she was just sick all the time she just Sophia when she was two years old she didn't even talk that often she would talk in one word sentences and she never would elaborate on anything she couldn't run she never run, ran when she was two and a half years old she pulled a wagon across our yard and we thought that we were gonna have to phone an ambulance because she, she lost her breath from that it, it was horrifying that she would go to the babysitter when she was two and the babysitter would say to me you know She's such an easy girl. She just sits beside me while the kids play. And the reason that she would do that was because she didn't have energy and she didn't have any breath to play. It was just horrible. So when Sophia was um, just, just under three, she was a tiny, tiny little girl. She was really thin. She was just a tiny, she was a big, huge, chubby baby when she was born, but from all the medication and from being sick so often, she got really, really thin. I mean, not skinny, skinny, but nothing like she was and she just was a tiny little girl and one day when she was just uh, she was just a little over three um she climbed into a to a she climbed into a jumpy castle and she started jumping and a couple minutes after she started jumping she sat down and i said sophia you need to get out and you need to come and sit with me you have to realize that I was monitoring her behavior all the time because she didn't never she just never had any breath but not only did she never have any breath she didn't have any immune system to fight any infection or any virus if she got when we got sick we just got a little bit sick but when Sophia got sick she was in bed for days she would was two years old and she would wake up two and a half years old she would wake up in the morning and come downstairs and she would say I just need to lay down. I just need to lay down on the couch. It was awful. Like, it, it, like I can't even tell you how awful it was. So the day that I took her out of the jumpy castle and laid her on the couch, I phoned Sam at work and I said, just be on alert. Sophia's not doing well. I think we need to take her to the hospital. And um, he just came home. He just came home and within a minute, he said, yep, she needs to go. So we packed her up and we took her back to the hospital. She was just, just three years old at this point. And we stayed in the triage room, triage area for a long, long time. They kept us, they got a bed for us. They started to give her medicine. They started to do some therapies to try and get all of the stuff out of her lungs and trying to get her breathing better. And um, they had some specialists come in and look at her and she had really bad pneumonia again. And so we were admitted and I'll try and put some pictures up here. Um, 
at this point they said okay this is the second time this little girl has been admitted to the hospital with pneumonia and we need to make sure this doesn't happen again they take it really seriously where we live and they made me fill in this monster sized questionnaire i had to do interviews with them we had to talk about if we had dogs we had to talk about if we had a fireplace we had to talk about um, all the activities that we did we had to talk about all these triggers we had it was just insane and again being in the hospital is really hard we have other kids and Sam was trying to work and, and juggle the babysitter and juggle all of our other children and, and meals and then still come and support me at the hospital and Sophia and anyway so again a couple days later they um, actually while we were in the hospital on that visit, remember I was talking about how Sophia had this stuffy nose issue? Well, um, recently before she got pneumonia that time, it started to get even worse. It started to get to the point where I would hear her on our baby monitor making these horrible, horrible sounds with her nose. And Sam and I, Sam would be downstairs and hear her and I would be in my bed and I would hear her and we'd both meet in her room and we would stand over her watching her sleep. And it, it sounded like she couldn't breathe and it was in her nose and she would be breathing this she would be breathing this weird sound and then she would wake up and sit up and look around, roll over and go back to sleep. And this went on over and over and over for uh, ever since she was a small baby she had this issue. So while we were at the hospital this second time, the pediatrician came in and Sophia was sleeping and it was mid-afternoon and she said, why is she making that noise? And I said, I think she has sleep apnea, but I don't really know. Like. I, I had taken her to the doctor for it and he was going to recommend us to uh he was going to send us to a pediatrician so um she said my husband is a ear nose and throat doctor and i'm going to have him come in here and look at her and uh, he was in the hospital that day and lucky for us he came in and he listened to her breathing and he said yeah she has sleep apnea and she needs to get her adenoids out he said, as soon as you're out of the hospital, make an appointment at my office and come in and see me. And so we did. So we got out of the hospital, we went home and we continued the way we were and giving her all the medication. She was on a lot of steroids again. I mean, they were giving us these big, huge fat syringes, this big and this long. And she was taking two of those filled with steroids four to two or three times a day, like huge. I've never seen syringes that big. And she was taking that much medicine and she was this little teeny tiny little girl. And so we went home and that was in February. And in June, Sophia had her adenoids taken out. And Sophia recovered from that she you know was in pain and she ate some popsicles it was a little bit longer of a recovery than I thought it would be um, but she recovered and about a week and a half later maybe 10 days later she walked down the stairs and she said a huge long sentence to me and I said oh what did you say and then she repeated it to me and when I say that she never had enough word enough air for a lot of talking she just never hardly talked when she was little and um suddenly she felt so much better that she just she just talked and it was not long after that that we went to a park with a friend and sophia ran oh i don't even know if i can tell this story it's just sad um but we all just stood there and we just we all just stood there and we watched her run and we were all cheering and saying, go Sophia, and she just kept going. It was like, it was amazing. So she had two separate issues. In the end, what happened was that she had sleep apnea and she was not ever getting enough sleep. So she didn't have, she didn't feel good because of that. She didn't have energy because of that. She didn't, she didn't have, it affected her immune system they assume it affected her immune system because she never was getting enough rest ever. But more than that, um, she was on so much medication that it affected her adrenal um, system. So it affected her hormones, it affected her whole entire system and that in itself created a situation where she had no immune system. She hadn't, she couldn't fight things off and then when she got them, she, she it, it just created a bad thing. Um, so after she had that surgery, I said, that's it. I'm never giving her medicine again unless she needs it. So even though the doctor had wanted me to give her um, inhalers throughout the entire season, whether she was sick or not, 
I stopped. I just stopped doing that. I had to wean her off that medication and as soon as she was weaned off of it, I put it in a drawer and I said she's not having it again unless she is in a life saving situation where I need to give it to her and I didn't give it to her. And what happened was that all of her fingernails split right in the middle and peeled off. It just, it was insane. That this is, I mean, she was already in school um, in senior kindergarten by the time this stuff was happening and her nails just split right down the middle and then just peeled off. It was awful. And she would wake up in the night. Lots of times she coughed all the time from the asthma. Coughed, coughed, coughed. But unless she was gasping for breath or she really needed it, I did not give in. And she started to get better. She started to get better. Um, she was a little teeny tiny girl. And when I got her off of that medicine, she grew two sizes in two months. She gained a ton of weight. She just grew huge. She just she just started growing and growing and growing. But anyway, she has been 500% better ever since she's been, had the adenoids fixed and ever since she's been off the medicine, she's a totally different child. She missed a couple of years of her life. She literally missed a couple of years of developing because she had to just sit and just be quiet and not this winter that's just ending now, but the winter before she was six years old and she got pneumonia again. And because she was six, um, we were in this house. We had moved to this house by then. And I have videos of her having pneumonia and being at here. And uh, because she was six, we didn't go to the same hospital that we had always gone to before. And the admitting criteria is different when they're six. And there was no pediatrician, pediatrics department in the hospital that we went to. Um, had we gone to our family doctor and gone through proper channels, maybe they would have admitted her, but I was glad that they didn't admit her this time. She was still, you know, pneumonia is not a fun thing. She was sick for about a good solid two weeks. She slept on the couch. She didn't hardly get up. She didn't hardly walk. She didn't hardly move. And this year she's been really good. It's been every other year she pretty much gets pneumonia. So hopefully next year she'll be nine years old and she'll be hopefully, you know, outgrown all of that stuff. But yeah, that is Sophia's story and that is how we almost lost her and how she was so sick and how we overcame it. And I'm not a doctor and I don't think that you, I do not recommend taking your child off any medication without their support and their approval. Um, we just this is just our story and what happened to us and how we handled it and um i know there are lots of kids out there way sicker than sophia ever was and my heart goes out to all of those mamas and daddies because just for just with as sick as sophia was i mean i'm not an emotional person i hardly ever cry and even this many years later talking about it i still tear up i even when i you know have talked to teachers and stuff in the past i i so I can't even imagine what parents have to go through with kids that are sicker than, the, than what Sophia was. But anyways, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching my video and um, I hope you liked it. I hope it made sense because it's hard to just sit here and um, remember a whole entire story and spout it back. But um, if you guys have any requests or any videos that you would like to hear, be sure to put them in the comments below because I'd love to, um, you know, make some videos that you guys want to hear. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below.